Hello everyone and welcome to A Slice of My Life and in this video I will be talking about the Coke Tools KTC2 and this is the Urban EDC Supply exclusive version which features the green micarta scales. I purchased this from Urban EDC Supply about a couple of weeks ago and I gotta say that express shipping is really really fast. From the US to Singapore like what in two days? That's amazing. So I've been spending quite a lot of time, quality time I must say, with this on my EDC for the past one and a half weeks. Now the first version of the KTC TC2 was released I believe in July 2019 and that featured D2 Steel with black G10 scales and then the second round which is basically this round, well not really this round but kind of like this round featured titanium scales as well as S35VN steel for the blade and this version here being the exclusive urban EDC supply version also has S35VN steel for the blade steel however that is not written on the blade at all, it's not written on the knife at all but yep it is the S35VN version so this is kind of like the more premium version and this one is made by Wee Knife. So what is the KTC2? You know I just realized that KTC stands for Coke Tools Company. Nice abbreviation yeah. This is actually a multi-tool. I mean I'm gonna classify this as a multi-tool because besides the fact that it's got a beautiful blade like that it also has yep a pry bar and a bottle opener on the other side and that is in a form of a slip joint. And just by doing that, you guys can already tell this features a two-tone finish on the steels. So that is both here and here on the blade itself. And it's got a very nice Coke Tools logo. So I'm gonna start by telling you guys about the aesthetics of this and let's start with the scales. Now, I am rather new to micarta as a handle material. I mean, it's not my first time actually having a knife with micarta scales. The first knife that I handled with micarta scales was the CRKT Razor. That initially came with a pretty smooth finish. What I did was I actually put an anso pattern in it but looking at this over here it's got a very nice texture and that to me is a plus point because yeah the texture is just really awesome. It's not too smooth and it's not too grippy. It's really really nice to the touch. But there's something that I want to point out and I don't know. I'm going to leave this to all of you micarta experts out there. Can anyone give me advice to see whether or not this is actually considered good worksmanship because you can actually see some of the fraying happening already and I understand that micarta is made of a fabric so fraying is probably going to be expected but you know um, it's like it's everywhere. Look down here on the insides even on the other side of the scale as well, towards the underside of the scale and all the way around it. So let me know if this is actually expected. Let me know if this is normal for my kata. For me, it's a little bit like my OCD speaking, like I want it to be like really smooth and clean. And I actually did some research online and some people were saying that you could technically use a lighter to kind of clean it up. So I might do that, you know, just to get rid of the phrase. Cause yeah, I mean, that's just, that's just me. But, but, but let me just say that these scales were made really well. You guys can see it's contoured, absolutely no sharp edges at all. And up here is a very, very generous chamfer. And I'm liking that a lot. And the same contouring and ergos is reflected in the other half or the other side of the scale as well. Now, since we're on this side, I'm going to show you guys the pocket clip. It is not a deep carry pocket clip and it is held in by two T8 sized torque screws. And at this point, I'm going to say, sorry, G-Man, this has no lefty love because you're not able to shift the clip into any other orientation. I mean, maybe here? But I don't think so because there is a cutout for the lanyard right here. So yep, there is a lanyard slot but the lanyard actually goes around the pocket clip. So the pocket clip is actually really essential to the whole setup. Because yeah, you guys can see that. And I might as well add now that there are replacement or upgraded pocket clips available on the Coke Tools website. Like it's in titanium, you could get some anodized and stuff like that. So some customizing options for anyone who wants a little bit more of a bling or more of a fashion statement on a seemingly pretty plain looking kind of tool. But I got to say that this actually goes very well with the whole aesthetic of it. And I really like it a lot because it is a same finish here as is on the spine of the handle. Yeah, I'm going to call this a spine because well, okay, well, the back spacer and the spine because this is a slip joint here. And of course, on the blade as well. So yep, now that I've got the blade open, I will say that there is jimping up here and I'm going to say that it is not too sharp. It offers a pretty good amount of grip here, but I got to say that blade stock is not too thick and I'll get into the specs in a short while. But yeah, I mean, since we're talking about everything, right, the whole function and look and feel of this whole knife, this is a liner lock and you can see that the liner is also black in color to match the whole aesthetic of this. Knowing we, the tolerances are pretty good and I got to say that I've not yet opened this tool up. I have not yet re-looped it at all. This is stock and the performance is pretty stellar man it's got good action we knife just just knocking it out of the park every single time moving on to the pry bar 
it's got jimping down here as well and that is a nice placement for jimping because this is where you're going to put your thumb whenever you open bottles here with the bottle opener and then we've got this uh pry bar area with a single-sided chisel grind i think that's what you call it right a single-sided chisel grind am i right am i wrong well i'm sorry if i'm wrong in terms of the two-tone finish it is brushed on the flats so that is also the same here on the blade itself on both sides you got a nice coke tools logo here no mention of the blade steel at all basically i think that is the aesthetics of it and where the jimping is and stuff like that so now i'm going to give you guys a very quick size comparison before we talk about the specs and my thoughts about this thing because yeah i just wanted to glaze through all of that just so i could preface the video a little bit but yeah i'm going to open up both tools or i should say deploy both tools so that i could give you guys a size comparison but with both tools being deployed you could see that the blade and pry bar are not in perfect symmetry because well the blade has this kind of interesting persian style kind of clip point here but then for the pride tool it kind of arcs in a different orientation altogether but yeah i'm gonna put it right here so i can bring the other knives in for comparison here we go um let me just put it nicely so you guys can see the light reflection so the tip of the blade is right there and the first knife for size comparison is a benchmade mini griptilian yeah guys i changed the scales back to the original frn scales and i gave it a nice red dye job it was originally hot pink then i just red dyed it purple gave it a nice fade but yep that is the benchmade mini griptilian next we have a spider co para 3 and this is the para 3 lightweight i also gave this a little red dye treatment this originally was red like the exclusive m390 red version and then i just used the same purple gave it that fade look that gradient look and i'm digging it a lot so you guys can tell the ktc2 is not as long as the other two knives on the table but it is much thicker so now i'm gonna close everything up so i can show you guys the thickness of this thing and you can clearly tell it is much thicker than a standard folding pocket knife right now i'm gonna put the specs of the ktc2 on this half of the screen because you know it's some boring stuff sometimes i don't know if everyone likes to know that so yeah i'll just put it there now i will be talking about my experience with this so far when i first saw this tool i was thinking wow this could be the perfect pocket tool that possibly could be like a be all end all for like any of my edc needs because you have a knife a blade basically and then you have a pry bar and a bottle opener all in one package however i gotta say that that really is in my opinion quite a novelty like i rarely use pry bars like this this is the honest truth i rarely use pry bars and i don't even really reach for this as my bottle opener because every time i want to drink something usually there's a bottle opener available elsewhere i mean let's face it like how many tools in the edc world feature a bottle opener right so if almost everything has a bottle opener then it's not really anything special but yeah i mean yes it serves its purpose very well that's one thing i will say about it it serves its purpose very well it works perfectly fine as a folding pocket knife as well as a pry bar and a bottle opener but what i will say is that it's much thicker so you do have to sacrifice that but because this is the micarta version it's not too heavy it's about 5.5 ounces and i know that in the edc world a lot of people value knives or pocket tools that are less than five ounces but this is 5.5 and honestly speaking i don't really care as long as it's not too heavy i'm fine with it so yeah this actually sits in my pocket quite well and i've actually enjoyed my experience with this because it's really really nice to hold and i only use my tools whenever there is a need for them i rarely ever fidget with them because you know i don't want to startle people we're here in singapore it's quite a peaceful society and uh yeah people get a bit uptight quite easily i'll be honest so yeah i mean i don't really fidget with my stuff very well but if you're getting it for what it is this is perfectly fine so now i gotta say that yeah when i heard that it's made by we i was like wow this is awesome this is possibly i had to say it but don't get me wrong it's not bad just don't get me wrong this is uh i think my least favorite we produce knife i'm not saying that it's a bad knife i like this knife i like this whole tool but uh as a tool i think Wii's strong points really isn't in slip joints in my opinion i've never handled a slip joint by Wii knives like i mean if ever i want to get a slip joint from Wii, it's got to be the scamp because it looks so good but i really don't think slip joints are Wii's strong points because i own a number of knives that are produced by Wii, and all of it has wonderful action and i'm gonna tell you guys that the action on the folding pocket knife area this blade area this action is good Good. it sounds just like a wee knife production like really especially the closing that that detent that sound that is so a wee knife sound you know what i mean like those of you who know you get what i mean apart from middle finger 
opening it you can also use your thumb to just flick it open like that but i gotta say that because of the way this thumb hole or this opening hole is is made like look at it, it doesn't really line up with the grooves on the scale so you got to put your thumb in a pretty uncomfortable position so it's either you're going to jam a lot of your thumb fat into it and flick it open like that or if you are the kind that uses your fingernail then you got to get your thumb in such a weird position and then flick it open so yeah it's not as snappy and a little bit um unnatural yep that's the word i want to say it's a little bit unnatural if however you use the fat of your thumb and you push down like that and you flick it up I just clearly missed guys but yeah um just by doing that that's actually quite satisfying but the most satisfactory way for me is to use my middle finger where i just get my middle finger in that slot right smack in the middle there and then just flick it open ah see guys again i missed i'm sorry guys this is performance anxiety there we go okay that wasn't too satisfying let's just try it again there yeah, something like that okay that's a bit better at least you get my gist right you get my gist now that the knife is deployed you see the lockup it's not too bad lockup is quite okay but my main gripe really is the walk and talk i mean i'm no expert at slip joints but the walk and talk of the slip joint area for this 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 pry bar i think opening is great but the closing feels kind of mushy if that's a word like i could use it feels kind of mushy like when it's closing all the way that's great but it's the half stop point the half stop point is kind of mushy when you open it up it's not even like a perfect 90 degree it's kind of like angled but this actually looks kind of cool like some t-rex or something but yeah opening it up all the way this part this part here that's great but it's closing up at the half stop point that is kind of mushy and then when you close it all the way Okay, that one's really satisfying. So that's something that I've got to point out. I'm not so sure what is the correct standard or what is a good standard for walking talk in terms of slip joints. But uh, since I'm talking about that and the tolerances and stuff like that, I must say that blade centering for the knife part is really good. But I don't know if blade centering is supposed to be a thing for slip joints and stuff because this looks dangerously close to the scale. Don't you think so? Like it looks really like as if it's touching the scale already. I mean... I, I can kind of feel it scraping against something if I push down this way. So I think the tolerances here are a little bit too tight. I'm not sure what exactly is rubbing against each other, but I think that it could be the top side or the show side of the pry bar interfacing or rubbing against that, that separator, that liner right in the middle. Yeah, it's just something that I wanted to point out because, you know, that's what I've experienced with this knife. I rarely open this part up though. I rarely did. Um, but I got to say that when I do and I hold it, like to open a bottle this is quite comfortable because you can see how the way my hand wraps around it my fingers go around the back to the scales here and kind of touching like the side of the blade here and i'll hold it this way because honestly you don't need too much grip when you're opening bottles it's quite straightforward but when you're talking about using this as a pry tool this is a little bit strange it feels a little bit unnatural because of the way it's shaped i think when you pry stuff you kind of want to hold it like like that right so your index finger kind of sits here and this is perfectly fine but to add on to that it's at an angle you can see that it's angled like that so you kind of pry towards yourself it's quite difficult to pry away from you because you can't really twist your hand far enough to get it flat you know and if you were to hold it like in a hammer grip for example the blade is one thing that it gets in the way but it's just it feels unnatural as well so uh, i think this is a pry bar tool that is not meant for hard use although i've never used a pry bar for hard use ever it's just you know it feels strange just holding it like that i i wanted to point that out i mean i'm not gonna hide anything that i find about this knife right but i must say that in its closed state i really love the lines it melts into the scale here it just goes so well with this contour and then it kind of bumps out like that so yeah, that's that's actually pretty interesting because you see both sides of the scales actually having this extra curve going in here. But when you're using the knife, for example, this sticks out. So this kind of adds like a little bit more um, space in between. And I've heard that some people mentioning online that it is uncomfortable here. But for me, I actually feel that it's quite okay. This part sits right here, the joints of my fingers. And then the pocket clip sits right here, this joint as well. I mean, you guys can see it. So it kind of sits in my hand very nicely. And my next finger actually goes into the groove here with my thumb on the jimping. So this one actually sits in my hand quite well. Even if I shift this a little bit higher up here to have the pocket clip in the middle of the palm of my hand, this feels quite okay as well because this part is right here, these joints. 
so it's not uncomfortable as well. Now if I were to change my grip into the pointer grip, all of this is not an issue because my fingers just wrap around it and it's perfectly fine. But I do have to admit that sometimes I wish that, well I'm just gonna deploy this, sometimes I wish that it felt like that. Because this is super comfortable. Because without the bump here on the pry bar tool, it just makes a lot of difference. I feel like this is how it should have been done. So I don't know. I don't know how Coke Tools might want to revise this. If there's ever going to be a KTC 3 or maybe a different version of the KTC 2. I don't know how this part can be bent downwards to accommodate for the pry bar side. But yeah, I mean, if this was like that, two curves instead it might be a little bit more comfortable that's that's just me now we spoke a lot about the aesthetics and the ergos of the scales but i never spoke about the aesthetics of the blade so here we go have a good look at this two-tone blade i don't even know what blade shape this is called because up here is like a clip point but it's a persian style clip point and it's got like jimping up here it's got a swedge up here as well it's got well, what do you call this? Like a compound grind? I, I don't think it's a compound grind because this part looks to be like a hollow grind. But this part here looks to be like a flat grind. But yet, it's a tanto and it's curved. So I, I don't know. Like, this is kind of like a little bit too technical for me. I want to say that even the finger slot here is chamfered. And the inner chamfer also has been blackened or has this black finish. But I got to say that it looks really dusty because that edge right there always scrapes against the top of my fingernail or scrape against the skin because that area is where my fingers always interface with and it scrapes off some dry skin sometimes the top of my fingernails and that is just that's just me i mean i gotta report it as i use it right just the way it is so you're just letting you guys know that that happens and just for convenience sake i put a lanyard here as well like i just tied this lanyard got like a lace tip from somewhere that i salvaged just glued it on this lanyard slot is a little bit more interesting because most lanyard slots are kind of like free moving and it's a long slot so you get a big space for a loop but for this one over here it swivels in a certain direction because of the way the lanyard slot is made see so that's something you should take note of as well. What I really like about this lanyard slot, the way it's done, the way it's executed is that if you have troubles putting your paracord or your lanyard into that slot there, you could simply just remove the pocket tool and then just focus on having the lanyard on the pocket tool first and then installing the pocket tool together with the lanyard after. I find it interesting because this is the only knife I've come across so far that actually does this and I like it a lot. All in all, I think it's been a pretty good purchase and I've been using it quite a bit i'm liking my experience with this thing so far i don't really have a lot of negatives well maybe i guess the biggest negative is the price point it's 299 dollars but 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 then again 299 dollars let's just face it it is the standard or the average price of a wee knife knife right so this is designed by coke tools but this is the first production folder that coke tools has designed and to be manufactured and i gotta say that because of that like this being Coke Tools first time, I gotta say that this is a job well done. I'm really liking it. It's smaller than most of the knives that I have, but it's definitely usable. It's got a beautiful cutting edge, slices very well, and it fits my hand quite well. It goes into my pocket pretty easily as well, and it's not too long. I really enjoy this. Yeah. 2.5 inch blade you know anything under three i'm quite happy with just it's just my personal preference and that is basically it i just wanted to give you guys an overview and just tell you guys that i have this and i'm enjoying it so far i gotta say good job to coke tools keep the good stuff coming man keep the good stuff coming i'm quite happy that i got this green micata version i think when it's time for me to clean it up what i will do is i'll try and like remove all these frays and i might consider giving the micata scales a rid dye job i don't know because i've seen some people who rid dye their micata materials and the result is quite beautiful plus i'm just thinking like you know since this is like green if i were to rid dye it like maybe like a dark color like maybe gray or black and then use a the sandpaper and just lightly sand at the top so i can send off that rid dye layer i might get a nice like even more contrasting kind of finish where you could really see the fabric weave a lot more clearly I don't know, it's just me just thinking out loud, yeah? And that is it, everyone. Thank you so much for sticking all the way throughout and sharing in the slice of my life. And I hope that you enjoyed this content. If you do like the content and you want to see more, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you do subscribe, make sure that you hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified of any new uploads that I put out. Also, I run a Patreon page. I'll put a link up here to that in case you want to go check it out. And if you do become a patron of mine, thank you so much in advance. It really means a lot to me. And with that, I'm going to wrap up the video. This was not a review. It's just me talking about my purchase of the KTC 2 by Coke Tools. Once again, thank you for watching everyone. 
I will catch all of you in the next slice of my life. Until then, everyone, gaga, boos.